So to understand what did it, the heck am I talking about, you have to understand a little bit about what how a corporation works. Uh, the way a corporation works is you earn the income, it's taxed at this low corporate tax rate. That leaves us this bigger pot of money to invest, which is kind of like a reservoir. And the benefit of a corporation is smoothing that cash flow. Instead of paying all of that tax up front as a personal, at a personal rate, you're allowed to slowly let it leak out, release the dam, let it flow out as dividends, and pay uh, pay tax spread out over time. Which you know, for most of us, works great because we earn a lot of income during some years, and then other years we may not earn much. Whether that's in retirement or we just have a, a pandemic or something, you know, lots of things can happen along the way. Or even, you know, we have children and we need to take some time off work uh, to deal with that. Lots of stuff happens and this helps us to smooth that out. Now, that's that's the best. That's what corporations were intended for. But we also try to use them to invest. And so we have extra income. We invest it. And to prevent us from doing that, just as a way of investing, we pay a high tax up front pretty close to what the mar top marginal tax rate is, that's collected immediately. And you don't get that tax back until you flow the money out the rest of the way and pay the personal tax on it. And then you get this refundable dividend tax on hand, which is this tax collected, some or all of that gets refunded back to the corporation. So for a corporation to work well, we have to be saving money. We can't be spending at all. We have to have some to invest, but we also have to be flowing enough money out of that corporation that we're keeping that refundable tax being being refunded back to our corporation. Otherwise, we're just paying the top rate right up front. And that's by design. So that's one thing is we, is we have to keep money flowing. The other, the other sort of myth that's out there is that investing through a corporation is more efficient. And this is why I talked about tax drag versus tax deferral at the very beginning. Tax drag is when you flow the money out. And there's something called tax integration, whereas if you take investment income, just like any other income, flow it through your corporation to yourself, you pay corporate taxes, you pay personal taxes, and those should add up to be roughly the same as what you would have paid on your own. But tax defer integration is not perfect. So you pay 50% tax up front, you flow out those dividends, and you know this is with interest, 30% gets refunded back, there's about 20% that's that's not refunded it's just money that's basically lost and then you pay your own taxes when you pay that money out as dividends that releases that tax but if you add up the amount of tax that your corporation pays net of the refund and that you pay the tax integration does not favor a corporation you're actually more tax efficient investing on your own and that's why if you're able to efficiently get money out of your corporation invest it yourself that money is actually generally more efficient than it is in a corporation. And that's with the dividends flowing through. If you're not paying dividends out of your corporation, then it becomes very inefficient uh, most of the time. So on the left column here, we got the lowest tax bracket. So if you're a bottom tax bracket person and the corporation pays 50% tax up front and you're not paying any dividends, well, you've paid 51% really tax up front. If you had just earned that personally, you would have paid around 20% and your corporation is paying 30% more tax per year than you would have just been paying investing it personally. Now, the interesting thing that's happened over the last few years is that our personal tax rates in some provinces have gotten so high that they're actually higher than the 51%. So when this system was designed, it was designed that this 51% was punitive and going to stop people from leaving money in their corporations. Well, now we have so much high taxes personal in some places, like this is the BC rates that I used here in Ontario is the same thing. And that's actually a little bit higher than that 50%. So on a one-year basis, it's more efficient to just leave it in there at some point. But at some point, you're going to have to take that money out, and then you're going to have to pay this the extra rest of the tax, and then you're going to have some of that tax inefficiency. So it depends on how long you leave it in there. And this is where something called dividend trapping, I don't know if that's a real name or not, I kind of made it up, uh, may come in. And this becomes an issue for some people, but not most people. Most people are going to be spending some dividends to live on, right? So you have this 50% tax that's collected up front. You need to spend some dividends to live on that money gets refunded back to your corporation and the net of all of that is a little bit of corporate tax drag, but not too bad. 
if you don't need the dividends to live on, let's say you're paying yourself, you know, $160,000 a year in salary to max out your RSP or $165,000 to max out your RSP and your spouse has an income and that's all the money that you need, you don't need to pay yourself dividends. Well, then you have to decide, do I pay, pay myself a dividend just to release this money back to my corporation or, or is that actually more expensive? So up to the and the so this is where dividend trapping comes in. So this is a, a an example uh, using BC tax rates just as a, to illustrate how it works. So if you were to add up the amount of tax that you pay personally and the amount that you pay corporately, that's what this this side is here. This is your personal income along the bottom, and and as I showed, you know when you're very bo bottom tax bracket, low tax. You know, it makes much more sense for you to take out the money personally and pay tax at around, you know, a little bit under 30% when the corporation's paid 50% tax already. So it makes sense to just pay yourself a dividend, whether you need the money or not, and release that 50% back to your corporation, even though you're paying a bit of tax yourself. And this is where the just leave everything in the corporation advice is probably actually not accurate, even on a one year basis. Now, of course, as you go up into the personal tax brackets, it gets closer and closer and closer. And at some point, the amount of tax that you'd pay, whether you take the dividend or not, is basically the same. But the after that tax, after that point, paying yourself a dividend just to get the money back to your corporation is now inefficient. And that's where that refundable tax has been collected and not refunded back to your corporation. It's trapped there until you decide to pay that money out. And that would probably, for most of us, happen if we have a big expense that we want to cover or in retirement, we're not going to pay ourselves a salary anymore, we're going to pay ourselves uh, dividends. So it, it does get released eventually, but along the way, you can develop this inefficiency that drags on your growth. So what does that look like for other provinces? It's interesting for, for Manitoba and Saskatchewan, in Saskatchewan, it never happens. Uh, for Alberta, it almost never happens unless you're in the highest tax bracket. But for Manitoba, it happens at $100,000. For most provinces, it happens around $150,000, $160,000, which interestingly is around the same amount that you'd be paying yourself to be able to use your RSP. Now, I didn't go through it all, but if with eligible dividends, those are like the ones that Canadian companies give you. So if you buy something on the TSX and it's paying you eligible dividends, those are actually very, very efficient. The amount of tax that's collected is, is 38%. And the amount that's refunded is 38%. So the tax integration for the corporation is perfect. And because eligible dividends are taxed favorably in our personal hands, in most provinces, it's never an issue. In some provinces like Ontario, uh, because our highest tax rate is so high, it can happen, but not until you're getting up into the 220s. And even then, it's really, really close. It's like a 1% difference. It probably doesn't really matter. I would not sweat it. So that was one of the mathy parts of the talk, which uh, you know I, I addressed because it's important to understand this to be able to talk to your accountant, because they may say, just leave everything in the corporation. So you have to know that this exists. And it's also one of those things people are always asking about. But the, really, the take-home messages of it would be that interest in foreign dividends are generally less efficient in a corporation than a personal account. So if you think that your corporation's better than investing personally, it's not, uh, especially for things that are interest in foreign dividends. But eligible dividends are very tax efficient. And you have to flow, flowing dividends, whether you need the money or not, is generally actually pretty efficient up until you get to these breakpoints in income. And then it may become less efficient. And that's why when people, the people that do run into trouble are the, are the low spender, big savers, where they have a huge corporation that's got a lot of passive income, but they don't, they're not paying much out to live on. And if you do have extra money that you're paying out to yourself to release that refundable tax, well, what do you do with it? Well, you can, well, you could think about what you're doing and maybe spend on something fun. Uh, you may want to use that as a way of putting money in your TFSA or RSP or your personal cash account. Uh, for some fun spending down the road. But the main point here, the take-home message, which is why it's in the green box, is to check with your accountant that your refundable dividend tax is getting released. And if it's not, ask them whether it makes sense to pay dividends to release it or not. 
And and if they say, oh, I just always leave everything in the corporation, ask them whether that makes sense or whether the, 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 the divins are getting trapped or not. Not everybody thinks about that. It's one of these things I've seen not come up.